on merit. But he doesn't help himself. What do you mean by it? When he says we exalt some above others. Yes. Again he uses we exalt. Of course Allah exalts because automatically you can't reach anything. You can't even get the fruit of your labor automatically. You know this is, we are in a state of sleepiness. We are living as if we are dormant. We don't realize that what we believe is uh, as automatic consequence of our labor is not, not at automatic at all. If Allah provides the fruit of the labor, then we get the fruit. Otherwise, we won't get anything. There are so many factors involved between the labor and the ultimate ripening and gathering of the fruit and later on benefiting from that fruit that if a single stage is lost, your fruit is lost. So Allah sees to it that those who put in labor, their labor is rewarded. And for that, maybe hundreds of thousands of factors are working which are unobserved and unseen by our eyes. So this is why the ultimate responsibility is taken by Allah. He, is, he does this and He does that. In one of the surahs, I think it is Vakya or one of the end surahs, the Holy Quran particularly harps on this subject, that you burn the fire and you think the flame that you burn, that does this. But no, it is Allah who does it. You sow the seeds and you think that the crop that has followed it is your labor. It is, it is not so. It is Allah who brings the crop and sees to it that ultimately it bears fruit. Now, when you read that full surah, then you begin to understand the meaning. <coughs> that is not as simple as that. You throw a seed somewhere and it would suddenly that you consider labor and as if the natural consequence should be that immediately that, should, that, that seed should increase in number. It should be, not be the natural consequence. The natural consequence should be that whatever you throw away is thrown away and lost. Its multiplication is a special phenomenon, is a special favor. You throw the same seed even in a wrong time, at a wrong time. You lose it. In the wrong atmosphere, you still lose it. In the wrong climate, in the wrong soil. And yes, you throw in everything, uh, in every perfect condition, every suitable condition, and there is no rain from Allah. Some disease occurs for which other factors which are responsible to ward off that disease are not operative by Allah's command and suddenly the crop is overwhelmed. So even if you go into the ecology and consider this aspect of uh, a farmer's labor and the stages involved between that labor and the ultimate fruition of that labor, then you will begin to understand that everything is beyond our control. Because automatically so many factors from Allah are involved <coughs> and they are helping us, we believe in our blindness that, oh, you see, we did it and we got it. Once I remember, it's a very interesting incident. I remember that when Hazrat Khalifat ibn Sisalis, the third caliph, um, ordered his first, uh, um, that what's that machine, it's, uh, you know, that, uh, cuts the crop and uh, threshes it, threshes it, threshes it. Combine, combine harvester. No, combine. Combine harvester. That's called the, 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 the combine harvester. So when we first order his combine, I also order along with him and our combines yeast about the same time. And uh, the crop was just ready. And both he and I had very good crops, just first class crops. And while the com his combine reached first, while we were examining him, also sent message to me that come and see this combine. It actually was, I think, a Danish or Swedish made combine. We got it from Shanlas Limited. So
So it was a beautiful affair when we were enjoying it. Suddenly, a cloud rose, which was a normal cloud, you know, a column of cloud came very rapidly and it developed into a storm and it started, uh, um, um, you know, the hail storm started. Hail came in such size that never in my life did I see a hail that big. <coughs> One of them I took home later on from my, uh, my farm and weighed and it still weighed half a pound. Many a cattle was killed. Some roofs were pierced through by the, by the hailstorm, by the hails, and uh, some children under the roof were killed or injured. That was the extent of damage that was done to the crops by that hailstorm. The result was that there was nothing to read. <laughs> so, Mr. Khalil and Mr. Salas gave a khutbah sermon on that and he was very happy. And we were all very happy with the grace of Allah because we knew that it was a reminder from Allah to us that even for a fraction of a second, if Allah's grace is taken away, you can be deprived of, the lab of your labor's fruit, which you consider is your labor's fruit. <laughs> Things are held in order, in balance. So many factors are working underneath. And so many angels are at work all the time to run the machinery of the universe in perfect balance. And we think we have done it and we can do it. This is wrong. Thank you, please. So Allah is, is justified when He says, I did it and I did it. Yeah? In that sense, I mean. Huh? Any other questions, please? Yes. Assalamualaikum. Um, Has your parents returned? Return? They are leaving this Sunday. On the Sunday, this Sunday. Yes, this the day after tomorrow. Azura Hazrat Masih Ahmad Yasatu Assalam has written that ilham or mukashafat and those things are the uh, ultimate spiritual reward in this life and are of a great, uh, a source of great strength for the people who receive them. But at the same time, he has discouraged uh, from wishing for it. What is the seer in it? I, I don't think he has written that these are the ultimate rewards in this life. You must have uh, misread or mis... Uh, Understood probably. Uh, construed his meaning. Because what he specially, specially lays stress upon is the ultimate is Allah's uh, pleasure. To live under Allah's blessing and Allah's pleasure and not to do anything to offend Him, that is the paradise on earth. And if you get that, do not be over desirous of receiving wahi or ilham or dreams, if they come automatically, naturally, then of course it's an added heaven. But you should not desire because sometimes that trial is uh, beyond your capacity to cope with. Sometimes, you, instead of benefiting from it, you fail in the trial and become proud of your piety have misconceptions about yourself and your strength and you believe, begin to believe that all right, I am bigger and higher, I am receiving al Lam, and who is that and that and so on. So that arrogance, that uh, uh, miscalculation about oneself, that conceit, all these are signs of one's failure. So if it pleases Allah, judging according to our strength and cap capabilities, that uh, you can digest that much. He may bestow that favor on you. But don't desire it, leave it to Allah. This is what Hazrat Masih Madhya has written. And the reason of which I am providing you with is also given, given by Hazrat Masih Madhya How else otherwise would you know that God Almighty is happy with you or your efforts? Well, if you are...